Yo, what up? This is Josh Rubin from Mesoist Healing and Performance. Today, I want to talk to you about vitamin A. Now, we talk about the importance of foods. We talk about the dangers of this, the dangers of that. And we talk about the importance of specific vitamins and nutrients and minerals. I'm not saying go out there and start taking vitamin A. Now, I'm not saying, you know, I haven't recommended a vitamin A before. I use it in specific situations, only when needed. And I have to be honest with you, let's say over the past year, I've probably used it with one client. Because you have to be careful, because most of the vitamin A sources are actually plant sources, which can actually, it can benefit people to some extent, but if they're really deficient or estrogen dominant, it can actually increase um, estrogen production in the body. So you want to re be really careful with the type of vitamin that you're using. Now, we can get vitamin A from foods. That's why I say this. You can get it from eggs, milk, cheese, and you can get it from liver. Now, a lot of people don't like liver. They're afraid of using liver. Of course, you can cook the liver. You can cook it, cut it up, put it in ice cube trays, and swallow and ingest three to six ounces per week. You want to be careful because you don't want to take in too much because of the iron content. But it's loaded with minerals that are very beneficial for thyroid conversion in the liver, but also the vitamin A content. Now, what we do is we actually make a pate out of it. It's my grandmother's recipe. It's pretty simple. So every half pound of liver, I use one white onion and one hard-boiled egg. And of course, if you want to increase it, you can. So what we do is we cook the liver, saute a white onion in some butter, salt, and pepper till it's soft, not mushy, just soft enough, and hard-boil one egg. Now we have that big KitchenAid mis mixer. I forget what it's called. It's used for baking with the big bowl and the whiskers. Get an attachment, I think it's 50 bucks, and you just put it on there and lock it on there, it's good. And it's a grinder, it grinds things. So I take the cooked liver, the onion with the butter and the salt and pepper and the high-boiled egg, I grind, put it through the grinder and it spits it into a bowl. And then you just mix things together and you have your pate. We recommend per person eating about three to six ounces per week. Now, of course, if you have high iron levels, you want to be careful with how much you take in. And, of course, making sure that you're never eating it around foods that contain vitamin C, vitamin C, because that, that can actually increase iron absorption. So a lot of the times if people have increased iron, we just tell them to maybe sip coffee after that meal to downregulate iron absorption. But there are times during pregnancy that people are from exercise-induced anemia that do become anemic. And these are the times when you want to increase your liver intake, increase the amount of citrus fruits like a pulp free orange juice you have around when you eat the liver or the meats to increase iron absorption so you don't have to take an iron pill. And I actually did two YouTubes on the dangers of iron, so check those out. So why do we need vitamin A? What is the importance of actually getting vitamin A? Well, vitamin A is required with thyroid hormone, which is more specific to be T3, for the conversion of cholesterol into all steroidal hormones. This is why high cholesterol, according to Broda Barnes, Ray Pete, Lita Lee, and many others, is actually a marker for hypo... I'm having trouble speaking today. It's a, a marker for hypothyroidism. Anytime the body is stressed, cholesterol is going to go up. It's a huge antioxidant, and it's needed to actually promote the production of steroidal hormones, including cholesterol, cortisol. So if it goes up, you can't actually convert it because you're T3 deficient or vitamin A deficient because you need it for the conversion. Then you actually end up with high cholesterol, which is actually more of the inefficient conversion of it because of a deficiency in vitamin A or T3, which is usually a sign of hypothyroidism. So one way we can actually help people that have damaged metabolisms or, I don't know, I'm not sure what I'm doing right here, namaste, but people can actually use it to actually downregulate cholesterol production or increase the conversion of it. You know, certain things like endotoxin actually decrease the, the conversion of cholesterol to pregnenolone. Things like T3, you know, vitamin A from foods, upregulating metabolism to increase T3 production with the right types of fruits and vegetables. Um, at the same time, it's been shown, according to Ray Pete, that potassium actually increases or accelerates the conversion of cholesterol into pregnenolone. So there's so many things that you can actually do to benefit your body. Preformed vitamin A or retinal, it's an aldehyde form of retinol, is needed for the formation of rhodopsin to, or a visual purple light receptor in the eye. So as you know, vitamin A from the right sources can actually help with the eyes, nurturing the eyes and eyesight. Vitamin A stimulates the growth of the base layer of the skin and helps the skin with structural integrity. This is why when people have vitamin A deficiencies, they can actually become estrogen dominant, which actually increases keratin production, K-E-R-A-T-I-N, which can actually lead to dry skin. It can actually lead to hardening of the skin, you know, falling out of the hair, dry, brittle hair, things like that. Those are some signs of vitamin A deficiency. Now, I'm not saying go take vitamin A, you're going to be good. You have to eat the right foods and the right ratios and the right frequencies and the right, you know, grams to meet your metabolic needs. 
It's involved with layering down new cells, including in the bone, lung, teeth, skin, and intestinal tract cells. So it's very beneficial for our cells to increase steroidal hormone production, energy production, but also for the structural integrity of these other parts of the body. It's needed for a healthy immune system by op optimizing the function of white blood cells. So it actually is very important because white blood cells and their movement are regulated, the phagocytosis is regulated by body temperature and energy production. So if body temperature goes down and energy production goes down, we know in a sense they're hypothyroid or hypometabolic, we can assume they're not converting cholesterol, and we consume they have a vitamin A deficiency. So vitamin A actually plays a huge role in regulating and activity, regulating the activity and movement of white blood cells because it actually regulates them but increases body temperature through steroidal hormone production and energy metabolism to upregulate body temperature. So body temperature regulates white blood cell production, movement, and activity. It's needed to protect tissue from infection and aids in the repair process of tissue, so it's very important, of course, for tissue healing and uh, remodeling. So maybe the days that you work out, you increase the foods that you maybe eat with vitamin A, like your milk, dairy, cheese, your liver, things like that. Maybe the days you work out, you know, you've created that nutritional foundation, you're eating the right foods, not the, the, the digestible foods and the right frequency and the right ratios to meet your metabolic needs. And maybe the days you do work out, you take the right type of topical vitamin A to actually meet your metabolic needs on that day to actually help with tissue remodeling and recovery. Or maybe that's the day you actually increase or eat liver. Maybe you work out three days a week, so you eat two ounces those three days to get in your six ounces per week. There's many ways to do it. Everything is person specific. It's needed for the absorption of calcium and the synthesis of protein. So vitamin D is needed for the absorption of calcium. Calcium absorption happens in the small intestine. So a vitamin D deficiency can actually affect calcium metabolism. A vitamin A deficiency can actually affect vitamin metabolism. And if you're calcium deficient, you're going to have increased parathyroid hormone production, which increases the breakdown of bone to leach calcium into the body because it needs it. The problem is now it actually gets pushed into the arteries, the tissues, the heart. We get calcification. And it actually increases parathyroid hormone, which is actually inflammatory. Now, yes, you can use eggshells you know, and get calcium in your diet to downregulate parathyroid hormone, which is you know inflammatory leading to osteoporosis and oste uh, I'm having trouble speaking today, osteopenia, but using vitamin A in our foods, getting the right amount of sunlight, regulating hepatobiliary function by taking the burden off the liver and gallbladder, by eating the right foods so the gut's not so overloaded, and eating foods with vitamin A, we can actually regulate calcium metabolism indirectly through upregulating vitamin D and vitamin A production. It enhances recognition of food antigens by improving the antibody response. So once again, we're going back to the immune system. Vitamin A from animal sources, which are retinoids, converts beta carotene to vitamin A. So a lot of the times you can tell if someone's actually, let's say, plant source vitamin A excess. A lot of the times they're estrogenic, and a lot of the times they'll get orange calluses, they'll get orange heels, cracked heels, things like that. Now that can be an excess of beta carotene plant source vitamin A, or we could look at it as a deficiency and the animal source of vitamin A. And this is when you're going to increase the liver, the meats, the dairy, um, the milk and cheese and eggs and things like that to get in more of the animal source of vitamin A. And maybe downregulate the amount of plant source they're taking in. Now, on our diet, the only plant source of vitamin A they're going to get is from carrots. We use the carrots to increase the absorption of estrogen and endotoxin in the small intestine. But if people use them one to two times a day with food and they get orange calluses, then we know they're actually having trouble making this conversion because they're actually deficient in animal source of vitamin A. So actually downregulate the amount of carrots they're eating or maybe use bamboo shoots because it does the same thing and increase the animal source of vitamin A that they can actually get from their foods to downregulate or assist in the conversion so we're not pushing them estrogenic. And it can actually protect against hypercalcemia, which can actually lead to fibrosis, atherosclerosis, things like that, calcification. We have to be careful, though, with the, with the plant source, like I mentioned, because too much beta-carotene can be converted into estrogen and serotonin, which can be toxic. And at the same time, I've mentioned many times, estrogen and serotonin, among other things, actually directly stimulate cortisol, which can create hypoglycemic reactions, leading to even more of a hypometab uh, hypometabolic sy uh, syndrome. Too much retinol can lead to slight swelling of the brain, cause pressure headaches. So you want to be careful with how much we're taking if we're taking a supplement because it actually can lead to edema, migraines, and things like that because it actually increases estrogen production. Vitamin E deficiency 
Cortisol, high iron, alcohol decreases the absorption of vitamin A. So vitamin E actually increases the efficiency and the use of vitamin A. And we can get vitamin E from our foods very easily as well. There are some people that we use a powdered form or topical form of vitamin E when needed, but vitamin E actually increases the efficiency and use of vitamin A when needed in the right person. Of course, not regulating blood sugar, not eating the right types of fruits and root vegetables, we produce excess cortisol. Excess cortisol not only actually inhibits T4 to T3 production, it increases T4 to reverse T3 production, it lowers blood sugar over time because it's stimulated with glucagon, but this can actually affect vitamin A absorption in the body. Same thing with iron, maybe from our pots and pans, maybe from pills that we're taking, things like that. So watch the two YouTube series I did on the dangers of iron part one and part two. And of course, alcohol consumption. And that's not really a part of anyone's diet when they're trying to heal and get healthy. A deficiency in zinc can interfere with the metabolism of vitamin A. So zinc is actually needed with um, thymine and chloride to make hydrochloric acid. It's part of the immune system, the hormonal system, etc. But a deficiency can actually affect the metabolism of vitamin A. And you can get the right amount of zinc and copper from eating the right types of shellfish and, and whitefish and things like that to regulate metabolisms. Because those are very beneficial because they're low in unsaturated fats, which is non-inflammatory, but high in minerals to help regulate thyroid hormone production, but also regulate certain things like vitamin A production. Another take-home is this. Vitamin A is a precursor to progesterone. We can assume that if you're vitamin A deficient, you're progesterone deficient. And you're actually pushing yourself into an estrogen dominant state. So we could say that that estrogen dominance is not really an estrogen dominance. It's actually a progesterone deficiency, but the progesterone deficiency is not really a progesterone deficiency. It's actually a vitamin A deficiency. Peace.